you have been working on this kind of thing. Uh -huh. So well, I will tell you later uh, what we have been do, doing on that. And also, there are some who outside, outside the school, uh, those uh, elderly people or other people, they are interested in working on community learning center or local museum. So it is a place uh, for cultural activities, for disseminating in the information, and also doing some other thing outside the school. Uh, the next thing is that uh, there are there, there are some classes outside the school, like language nest, or uh, uh, working uh, uh, with the elderly people learning languages outside outside the school. The, the next thing is uh, uh, the study of local languages and revival effort. Uh, people want to work on, for normally they want to, to work on uh, study and documenting the forest and local plants, food culture, herbal medicine, uh, ritual or ceremony. So they're also working on that. Um, so the community people are working. They can choose uh, what, uh, what uh, is suitable for their uh, local context. Uh, for helping them, we have a group of research team uh, going to visit them from every month uh, for monitoring, evaluation, and also facilitation, helping them because they have got to write re report uh, of the work uh, of, or do some financial report. So we, we have got to help them. Another thing is to uh, connect them with, with other organizations for sustainability. So we have the stakeholder networking. Well, so there's a local and central government agency, academic institution, the local administrative uh, organization or international organization. And the last thing is also to help to work on the supportive national language policy and education policy. So there are 11 steps for the blue, for the blue color, they can choose uh, uh, what, 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 whatever they like uh, or whatever fit to their local context. And, and the yellow one, uh, something that we uh, try to provide for them. Okay, I would like to, yeah, uh, for working on this process, uh, the first and crucial thing in the process uh, is to secure the participation of the community and help the language speaker to change the negative attitudes which have led to to endangerment in the first place and develop a positive group identity based in part on language. So uh, for working on the language revitalization, uh, we encourage them or support them to get the, some funding from Thailand Research Fund, small funding for them to have enough for organizing the uh, meeting or traveling. Uh, so the community become the owner of the project. Be they become the researcher of the, of the project and the owner of the project. And they actively carried out the work by themselves with the cooperation of outside scholar from, from uh, uh, academic outside. So uh, I would like to, to, to talk, to say something about some of the revitalization uh, activity that is quite important, like the orthography development. Uh, the orthography uh, development is, an, is a big issue in language revitalization. Um, because to most language speaker, the language is real when it has a written language. So the first activity that they would like to do is to create a writing system of their own language. And you will see that I, we have experience that they really like it. Uh, it's a most popular uh, uh, language revitalized uh, activity. Um, for orthography development, actually it's a complex process of, develop, of developing writing system for an unwritten language. But to, for, the, for the villagers, for the people in the community, uh, it's, it's a mission impossible for them because they always say that our language cannot be written. Uh, that's what they said. But uh, for using the uh, linguistic uh, knowledge or background, we can help the people uh, to create that kind of practical writing system. And they can use as a linguistic tool to expand the knowledge of a language beyond traditional oral state. So the orthography is designed to represent 
the phonological system accurately and consistently, giving a maximum transfer to the learning of Thai, which is the national language, using the existing resource of Thai writing system. Uh, this showed the uh, orthography uh, development workshop. So we have speaker of different age group, the elderly people who have a lot of knowledge, the middle-aged people who know both culture, both uh, can, can read and write, and also some the younger generation, also linguists and educators if possible. So we work on, on the orthography together. So we, I used to have experience uh, to work on the orthography for the group and they never use it. So for when, when we start the language revitalization program, we try to involve them from the very beginning to think about uh, what to do and, and then know the process. So we work together. And they really enjoy. <laughs> so, uh, uh, we, <laughs> sorry, sorry. Okay. So, uh, for the for the developing and uh, uh, writing system, uh, in order to get it accepted and used by the community, it's very important that we must have. Uh, the community involvement. So the community should actively participate in the orthography development from the very beginning. What they can do is that they can select the script, what kind of script they would like to use, Latin script, a Roman script, Thai script, or other script. And then they can look for the different or outstanding features of the language. They look for the minimal pairs, they can select the symbol for each sound, they can look for example uh, for showing the consonant, vowel, or tone, register so they can help uh, from the very beginning and and they when they can work on it they are very proud and then they have the link the tool for writing uh, the people can start writing everything in the, in their head so because it's their own language but and and the writing system is normally they prefer to use the Thai based because they are they were forced to uh, learn in the school so they know something even though they are not successful but but uh, they know the, uh, a little bit of the system and the script, so they can use it, not uh, uh, practically. So this is made the people were really proud uh, of their work. So one of the village headmen said that, uh, it is the best thing in my life to be able to develop a Yakur writing system for the younger generation. So this is something that they are very proud of, so they use it. Uh, some languages, bigger languages, they have traditional writing system. For this traditional writing system, uh, I think for language revitalization, we cannot use, use it uh, right away because uh, the language is old uh, and it's not uh, the same as the present language used in the, in the community, especially the younger generation. So we have got to use another uh, orthography uh, and another, another, uh, another kind of uh, orthography as a bridge for learning the language and for writing story before learning to use the traditional version later on. Um, so this is the Mon group. Yeah, they have the traditional writing system and then they have the Thai-based writing system. And for, uh, 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 for language revitalization, we use the uh, uh, Thai based first before going back to the traditional Mon writing system. And this is a Thai Dam, Thai Dam of Black Thai. Yeah, they also have uh, the traditional writing system and also have the Thai based writing system. And once they have a tool, we can have literature production. That is, you organize the writer's workshop for, for them so they know how to write, to do some writing. They can write down experience, stories, songs poetry, personal experience, and make it into big book, small book, uh, all those things. Uh, and also, they, some of them prefer to collect lexical items and they compile a village version dictionary by themselves. So uh, the linguistic tool using the mother tongue or the local language is really useful because all the people can, can join in and they can uh, write uh, uh, the story, song, poetry, or personal 
uh, experience, the elderly people, the middle-aged people, and also the younger generation. So the younger gen the, the, the small children can really enjoy reading stories uh, written by the people in the community. Um, yeah. Uh, this group also worked on the writing, writing system, and they can, this is Ulak Lavoy, they uh, work on something more complicated. That is something about the uh, uh, boat floating ceremony. Uh, uh, the, the method is rather complicated, but anyway, they can do that, and they are very proud. They said, said that this is the textbook for the ceremony. If they don't write it down, if they don't write it down, it will just disappear. And also, it's changed. Do people cannot do it uh, uh, in, in a right way. So they write it down and say that this is a textbook for the Ulak Lawo's boat floating ceremony. So this is, they can be done. They, this, they can do something like this too. And also something complicated like the, uh, the uh, geography, the names of the, around the island, some history and things like that. He has a lot of knowledge, but he cannot write, cannot read and write. But the girls can do it. The girls, girls are always uh, very good at writing, and they love, they love writing, using the new the practical orthography. Also, another thing that people like it is the knowledge. They have a lot of knowledge about plants and forests. So normally they would like to work on the uh, uh, herbal plants. Uh, food culture, food security, things like that. Local botany. Uh, this is this. Uh, they have they are the medicinal doctor, and they have a lot of knowledge about medicinal plants. So uh, they uh, they can give uh, a lot of knowledge, and the younger generation can can uh, record it or uh, document it. Yeah, and they organize kind of class for the younger generation to go out to the to the forest to write down to uh, to collect uh, some of the plants' name, yeah, and they really enjoy. Uh, also, the local song, poetry, and performing arts are also uh, documented, uh, yeah. And this is a, a traditional uh, poetry recital. Also, they, they, they can write down, and also they can uh, compose a new one. Uh, another thing which is uh, very important, and they really want to work on is the uh, re language revitalization through the schools, school-based language revitalization program, because it's a dream of all the speakers, it's prestigious. Uh, uh, two, two, two things that they uh, uh, work on, that is for the smaller group, they work on teaching the ethnic language uh, as a subject in the school. So uh, it, uh, they will teach about two, two or three times a week. But for the bigger group with a lot of energy, a lot of people, they can work on the mother tongue based bilingual or multilingual education. So I would like to, to present to you uh, one of, our, uh, of one of our projects in the south of Thailand. So in the south of Thailand, we have Thailand Malayu, uh, uh, where 80% of the population speak Patani Malay. Uh, and there is a political unrest and violence there. And we believe that uh, language identity issue and cultural conflict is uh, underlying the political unrest and violence in that area. Uh, there are two main problems there. One is the language identity issue. The Patani Malay, which is the uh, mother tongue of the people there, uh, are not accepted and are not used, cannot be used in education. So we, the, the language is declining, and at the same time, uh, they have a chronic underachievement in school. They have the lowest score in the country. Uh, uh, the student at grade three, they're supposed to be able to read and write. They still cannot read and write, about almost 40, 50 percent. So that is a big problem there. So in general, they have a fear that education uh, provided by the government is being used as a means to destroy their language and religious identity. So we, we, we uh, introduced um, uh, uh, and uh, introduced uh, Patini Ma, uh, introduced Patini Malay Thai mother tongue based bilingual education is a participatory action research project implemented in the four pilot school 
nine, it's a nine-year project, and it's already finished. Um, the goal is to facilitate Patani Malay speaking children to speak, read, and write well in both Patani Malay and Thai, and to retain their Malay identity at the local level and Thai identity at the national level, contributing to national social cohesion. Um, we use the uh, Ministry of Education standard, but add a multilingual education uh, element, something like language development. So we, this is something that we add. So it is, this is the language learning, it's a step-by-step -step language learning and literacy pro process we use in our project. That is, we start from the very beginning when the student uh, go to school, that is in, in kindergarten level. So when they go into school, we use the, uh, oh, the, the teacher, use the oral Patani Malay uh, as a medium of instruction. So the, the student learn about the life in the school, about everything in their own language. And at the same time, when they get used to the school, in the second semester, we start uh, the oral Thai for them to learn oral Thai, easy oral Thai, using uh, the method uh, that is e easy for them. That's the, the kind of TPR. Those who learn the second language we know the TPR, the total physical response. Uh, and at the same time, they go on. Uh, uh, using the, the oral Patani Malay. And then in kindergarten two, they start reading and writing in their own language in Patani Malay. Uh, why they also, uh, they, why they go on learning oral Thai, collect, have, uh, collect uh, some knowledge about the vocabulary. Uh, yeah, and then in grade one, they are, they are able to be, to be able to read and write in Thai. So they are written by the, by grade by grade one, beginning to be related in Thai. So, and then go on to grade, from grade two to grade six, we add other language like Bahasa Malaysia, introduction to Bahasa Malaysia, and also to, uh, to English. So this is, this is a step-by-step -step learning process and literacy, so it's not too difficult for them because they start with the language they know and they understand and also a bridging is to other lang to the national language. Okay, um, Patani Malay is um, is there, there is no writing system before. There was no writing system before. So in order to use it in education, we have got to establish the uh, Patani Malay writing system. There, there 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 are three three script issue. Actually, there are three script available in the area. One is a Java script. It's written in the religious, religious text, uh, and it's, uh, it's the use uh, is in the uh, classical kind of Malay language. It's not uh, the same as the Patani Malay language. The second one is the Thai-based orthography. The Thai-based orthography is naturally used uh, in the area for writing names, village name, and everywhere. Uh, that is using the Thai. Thai based for writing for the Malay. Another one is the Roman, Roman, Roman uh, script. They call it Rumi script. Uh, that is the same as in Malaysia or in or Indonesia. Uh, but people do not, are not familiar with that. Only those who study from Indonesia or Malaysia they and they, they, they prefer to use that. So after all the discussion, we finally we come to the conclusion that for language revitalization and for helping the student to be successful in school in, thai, in the Thai system, we have got, uh, we, they should use Thai-based uh, Patini Malay writing, writing system. So we work on developing the orthography, Thai-based orthography for this. So the, these are the uh, language speakers who work on this. And we have worked out the system, the Thai-based Patini Malay writing system using the using the uh, uh, Thai base, Thai script. <coughs> uh, it's not easy for them, it's not too difficult for them because they are used to the Thai writing system and the Thai, some of the Thai script. We don't use all of the, of the Thai script, pick, pick up only some. So this man is, uh, this man, uh, he, he, he is writing children game. He said that for using the 
a type-based uh, writing system is easy for him because he can write everything he has in their head. But if you think the JavaScript uh, uh, is rather difficult because uh, they, they used to use, read that, uh, learn about that only in the religious context. And using the mother tongue, we can get a lot of help uh, from, from the community, from the people in the area. Uh, they, can, they can join in uh, for writing stories, editing, drawing, bookbinding, and everything, curriculum development, uh, everything. Uh -huh. So they have produced Pati Malay, Thai, and Bahasa Malay, Malaysia dictionary. So that can be produced as well uh, after having the, 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 the script. And they can produce a lot of reading materials or instructional materials uh, in the mother tongue. This is a cultural scene that is used to stimulate talking and thinking of the small children. And the teacher then, and the, the, the language speaker also can be trained to be the teacher. So this, girl, uh, has, uh, this teacher has been trained and she is teaching uh, the story, the story, uh, the big book with a picture and a story. The small children cannot really read, cannot really read the script, but they know the language and then see it, see, see the structure. Uh, and the technique is that this kind of story, uh, it should be some repeated structure so that they can, do, they can see it and, and learn about the structure uh, naturally. Also, so this is help them for reading. Another thing for reading and writing is a kind of primer. So we, they work on primer, how to uh, 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 break up the word and also for composing up the word in the sentence. Uh, so Prima have been uh, prepared for teaching the, the student. And, uh, and the teacher have been trained to, to, uh, to, to teach. So um, the student uh, uh, learn how to read. They can learn how to read. And once they, they know how to read, they really enjoy reading. We cannot produce enough work for the children to read. And also, they love writing. They love writing. Uh -huh. uh, and the parents are very happy. They always come to the window of the school and looking at the performance of their children. Before this, the children are very, were very quiet and were very quiet, but now they are very happy because they, they are very clever, uh, talkative. And for the academic assessment, uh, it's clearly shown that they, they, we, have, we have the experimental school and we have the comparison school. Our experiment school have a better, better academic achievement and this is, this is clearly shown that. And also, because it's, uh, it's rather good, successful, uh, so uh, at the moment it is institutionalized in the teacher education in the faculty of education of the local university in the area. So these are the students, uh, uh, the teacher students in the area. Yeah, so they are successful. They, there are a lot of successes. So uh, the Maidan model is community-based language revitalization process, which is a cooperative work between academics and national linguistic community. The result has been satisfactory. People are happy and enjoy working on the language revitalization program. It makes people aware of the language crisis that has a direct impact on the loss of traditional wisdom. Thai-based ethnic language writing system have been standardized and approved by the Royal Society of Thailand. It helps document languages and local knowledge of various types. There is, uh, we have a lot of, a large amount of a collection of stories, tales, poetry, song, herbal plants, traditional food and everything. And it also, this helps to slow down the death of a language. It contributes to the environment and biodiversity preservation. It brings back the people's language and ethnic identity through community empowerment, which is a foundation for sustainable development. So uh, this is the, we submitted to the Royal Society and the Royal Society for the orthography. Uh, and the Royal Society accept it and publish the Thai-based orthography for 
for non-dominant languages. Yeah, these are some of the published manual for uh, 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 Thai-based writing system. And also, it contributes, the, this kind of work uh, contributes to the uh, current draft of the national language policy. So the language, the mother language is accepted to be the foundation or to be the core for learning other languages. And it is accepted, but it's not yet uh, passed through the cabinet. Uh, it's still in the process. Take a long time. Okay, so I, I would like to conclude that uh, despite all the numerous successes, there are ch big challenges. I, I don't have time to talk much about it, but uh, I want to say that even despite the numerous successes, continuing support is vital for community empowerment and language revitalization, and this includes technical and academic support. So this is what we uh, at my academic at Mahidon University and our network uh, help them. Uh, the second thing is some financial support. We, they got it from the Thailand Research Fund and, and for in case of the education in the South, uh, we have got it from the UNICEF uh, as well and also EU, the European Union. Uh, another thing is the institutional support. The government agency or academia like Royal Society University, school, uh, should also be involved. And the last thing is the moral support. That is a society at large. They need a lot of moral support. The big challenge is that most people uh, underestimate the value of the mother tongue or the local language. They don't see much value uh, or the power of the language. Um, actually, in the reality, it uh, can be very useful. Okay, time is up. Thank you very much. Oh, that's, I, can, I can go down here. Go down from here. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Suwile Premsirat from Mahindol University for giving us a concrete program and with 11 steps that we could use, uh, look into and uh, adopt eventually for our plans with uh, preserving our ethnic languages. Uh, thank you for presenting the situation of the languages uh, in Thailand uh, of, our, of particular interest also in the Philippines because we are already implementing our mother tongue program here in the Philippines. Uh, last but not least, uh, may I call on our beloved Commissioner Purification G. De Lima for her presentation of Bahay Wika for Aita Magbukon, the case of the Philippines. Once again, Commissioner Purification G. De Lima. I'm just the second Filipino presenter and the last one uh, and hopefully all eyes and ears will be uh, towards me but uh, because this conference is uh, a bilingual conference really intended uh, to showcase also the Filipino language Filipino national language I choose to present my paper in Filipino. But my PowerPoint, so our guests, foreign guests, will not get lost because my PowerPoint is in English. So there should be no problem unless, <laughs> unless uh, I'd cite some quotations, which I will read, of course, in the original language for that purpose. The paper is entitled, Bahay Wika for Aita Magbukon, the Case of the Philippines. Ang Bahay Wika para sa Aita Magbukon, ang kaso ng Philippines. Yarawa apon, yarawa ulu, 
Magandang hapon, magandang araw, good afternoon, good day. In my own language, in the Ilocano language, na imbag amalong tayo amin na po, na imbag nga aldaw. Ang aking papel ay tatalakay sa mga paksang nakalahad, ang pambungad tungkol sa mga wika sa Pilipinas, ang kanilang vitality, ang kaso ng Aita Magbukon, ilang demographics, ilang datos para sa profiling ng wikang Aita Magbukon, at ang kaso ng revitalization, pagpapalakas at pagpapasigla ng Aita Magbukon na kinabibilangan ng dalawang component, ang Bahay Wika at ang Master Apprentice Language Learning Program. Tuwang-tuwa ako palagi na ginagamit itong na buong mapa ng mga wika ng Pilipinas, na buo ng komisyon sa wikang Filipino noong taong 2014. Dito sa mapa ng mga wika ng Pilipinas, nakatala ang 130 mga wika kasama doon ang Filipino. Ibig sabihin, tanggalin ang Filipino merong isang daan dalawampu't siyam na mga wikang sa wikang katutubo at mga wikang malalaki uh, pareho. So, magbigay lang ako ng counting uh, pagpapakita rin ng mga wika o demographics ng mga wika ng Pilipinas. Ang UN sa taong 2018 ay nagpalabas na ng populasyon ng Pilipinas na isang daan at anim na milyon at limamput isang uh, populasyon milyon populasyon ng Pilipinas sa populasyon na ito ang Language Diversity Index o LDI ay ng Pilipinas ay 0.842 mataas ng 0.042 sa global LDI na 0.8 ibig sabihin napaka diversified ng mga wika sa Pilipinas ang 18th edition ng Ethnologue ay tumukoy ng 187 mga wika at dialekto combined para sa Pilipinas. Ang komisyon sa wikang Filipino noong taong 2014, nakita nyo sa mapa, ay nagpakita ng 130 wika. 27 dito ay may isa hanggang walong dialek, mga dialekto. Ganon, ka-diversified ang ating bansa. Meron tayong pambasang wika, tinatawag na Filipino. Ang gamit nito ay bilang pambansang wika, subalit nasa sistemang pang-edukasyon din, kasabay ng Ingles. Kung kaya ang Filipino at Ingles ay parehong official language, no? mga wikang opisyal at wikang panturo sa sistemang pang-edukasyon. Ganong kas kasigla, no? vitality, ang mga wikang ito ng Pilipinas. Nakatutuwa ang banggitin din, subalit, eto, ang mapa ng mga nanganganib na wika na binuudin ng komisyon 
ayon sa datos ng census, National Statistics Office data, uh, 2010 pa yon at ng ilang validasyong ginawa ng Komisyon sa Wikang Filipino. So ipakita ko no, na ang mga wikang nanganganib ng Pilipinas ay nasa buong bansa. Ang tinatawag na dying or threatened languages ay nakikita sa pamagitan ng pag kaunti ng mga populasyon ng etnikong grupo o, o at kaya ay ang pagkawala ng nagsasalita nung unang wika. Sa world data, no, pandaigdigang datos, may naitala si Nettle na 83 at 8% o limang libo at dalamput walong mga wika sa total na anim na libo na may isandaan isandaang libong tagapagsalita o mas kaunti pa ang UNESCO ay nagtala ng sampung libo lamang para masabing ang wika ay isang may estabilidad. Yan ang threshold ng UNESCO. Nakatutuwa na ang ethnolog din at ang ethnolog, ang may kumpletong datos no, ng demographics ng mga wika ng maraming bansa. Kasama dyan ang Pilipinas. So sa tinala ng 80th edition ng ethnolog, Languages of the World, Sa 177 mga wika ng Pilipinas, 175 ang katutubo, 8 ang hindi katutubo. 41 institutional, ibig sabihin malakas, 72 ang umuunlad, umuuswag, 45 ang vigorous, no? masigla, Subalit, nagtala ang ethnolog ng labing apat na medyo nanganganib at labing isa ang malapit ng mamatay. At nakapagtala din ng apat ng patay na wika ng Pilipinas. Kung kaya nagtrabaho din ang komisyon. Sa 2014, no, na tala nito na 130 mga wika. Sa mapa ng mga nanganganib na wika noong 2015, nagigawa, 25 lang ang naitalang nanganganib. Nang binalida sa pamagitan ng field validation at datos pa ng uh, 2010 uh, household ethnicity population ng NSO, meron, merong apat na put isa, subalit, tanggalin natin yung apat na natukoy ng ethnolog at dalawa pa na nabalida ng komisyon sa wikang Filipino, anim, tanggalin mo sa apat na put isa, may naiiwan na lang nabawasan pa, no? Uh, 35 nanganganib ng mamatay na wika. Magandang tukuyin ito na dalawang natuklasang namatay na ng mga wika ng Pilipinas dahil sa tala ng ethnolog ay sila'y nearly extinct pa. Ibig sabihin mga lima uh, dalawang mga nagsasalita pang naiwan. Subalit, ng aming personal na ibalida. Inakyat ang komunidad. Dalawa, tatlong bundok ba yun, Shelly? Pagdating namin sa taas ng bundok, wala nang nagsasalita. And this is a good chance, perhaps, no? 
for our linguists that uh, when we reach the community of this extinct, well, we've declared, no? We have declared, the commission, the KWF has declared this as extinct based on field validation. For instance, the Agta Sorsogon, which I personally saw, we were met by the community. So there's the community strongly asserting their cultural identity, saying, where the Agta Sorsogon? Where, and there's another name, where the Agta Simaron? Okay, just one group. Okay, we've learned that there's one remaining speaker. And that's why we had to go to the community to finally document the remaining speaker. Unfortunately, the 94-year-old or 96-year-old remaining speaker couldn't even recall a single word of their language. So maybe our linguists could start because linguistic theory says your language is your culture and your culture is your language. But now how do we identify them? They have a strong cultural assertion. They're saying, this is our culture. We are this. But how come you don't have the language? So language and culture inseparable. But now there's language that's missing, but there's the culture with a strong assertion. So maybe some linguistic theories on language endangerment could be rewritten or, or however. Um, the KWF also has documented walong mga wikang aita taong dalawang libo labing apat, dalawang libo labing anim, tatlumput apat na minoridad at majority na mga wika pa ang kasulukuyang dinadokumento. That's from the, from the project we call Linguistic Ethnography. We continue to document Philippine languages. Thanks to Senator uh, Loren Legarda again for some funding uh, to be able to do this project. I quote Hinton, Lian Hinton in 1999, saying, the decline of linguistic diversity in the world is linked to the world political economy, which invades and takes over the territories of indigenous peoples, threatens the ecosystem in systems in which they live, wipes out the traditional means of livelihood, and at best, turns them into low caste laborers in the larger society in which they must now live on the margins. True. Uh, so mga karanasang pinah pinahayag no, ng ating mga uh, tagapanayag, tunay na masalimuot at bayulente pa nga ang pangyayari. Pasalamat tayo. We are very thankful still. We're still diverse. And even if there are contentious issues between and amongst the Philippine language groups, we do not resort or we have not resorted to the kind of the Berber experience uh, that uh, uh, Salem just uh, gave us that would be horrifying. The case of the item of Bukon, and at this point, I'd like to recognize our community representatives. May dalawa tayong Aita Magbukon nandito, isang elder at isang youth teacher. Um, tinatawagan ko po si Elder um, Rebecca Reyes sa harapan at si teacher, teacher, young teacher, uh, Joy Maanyo Sarapan para makilala at mabigyan ng tamang 
pagkilala. So, si Elder Rosita, uh, Elder uh, Rebecca po siya. At si Joy Maanyo, sila po ay nasa ating bahay wika. Maraming salamat, Becca. Joy. Ano ba ang kaso ng item magbukon? Nakaranasan ng Komisyon sa Wikang Filipino at unang-una na kaso sa Pilipinas. Ang grupong item magbukon ay kasama sa negritong grupo ng mga katutubong tao na dumating sa Pilipinas. Tipikal na sila ay may uh, Uh, dark skin, curly hair, uh, small nose, and dark brown eyes. At sila ay nakakalat hindi lang sa Luzon, no? nasa uh, Amyan ng Luzon, Gitnang Luzon, at Timog Luzon sila. Marami sa Luzon. Subalit so, meron din sa Panay Islands. At meron din sa ilang lugar ng Mindanao. Alam namin ito dahil sa aming dokumentasyon ng walong, walong grupo ng negrito, um, yung, yung dalawa ay sa Panay Islands at yung anim ay dito sa Luzon. So normal na sila ay pag-alagala, nomadi. At dahil na rin, sa tinatawag nating pressure, no, tension na binibigay ng socio-economic sa kaligiran nila. At pati na ang kanilang buhay ay nagugulo. Magbukon ang tawag nila sa kanila at ayon sa naging dokumentasyon, bukod at magbukod at o oh, magbukod, ang ibig sabihin ng magbukon, bukod at magbukod ay Filipino meanings. Magbukon in their own language. At dyan sila, dyan nila gustong makilala dahil sila yung humiwalay sa Aita Ambala, uh, uh, isa pang Negrito group, dun din sa bandang uh, lalawigan ng bataan. Kaya sila ay bumuo ng sarili nilang identidad. Dinokumento ng uh, KWF ang Aita Magbukon noong 2015 kasama yung pitong iba pa. Kaya nga nabanggit ko kanina na meron ng walong na dokumentong mga grupong nagrito at isa dyan ang item magbukod. Kung kaya, katulad ng nabanggit ni Sui Lai kanina, kailangan ng isang malinaw muna at komprehensibong dokumentasyon even before you can proceed to revitalize, which the KWF did. Ang lokasyon, ang lugar ng mga item magbukod ay nasa Malawigang Bataan. So dito makikita, sorry, walang pointer ito, ang item magbuko nakakalat sa probinsya ng Bataan, Abukay, Bagak, Balanga, Limay, Mariveles, Murong, Orani, Orion, Samal. Ang ating item magbuko na kaso para sa bahay wika ay nasa Abukay. Ginawan matapos yung counting uh, uh, pagtuon sa mga datos sa uh, dokumentasyon, ginawaan ng language profiling para matukoy talaga kung ano ba ang estado ng item magbukon bilang wika ng mga item magbukon. Sa lahat ng walong siyang sa lahat ng siyam na lugar ng 
uh, mga item magbukon sa lalawigan ng Bataan, meron 383 sangkabahayan. Hindi walang makapagbigay ng definite uh, uh, population, but they're counted as households. So, 383. At 50% nito sa total na population, total na 383 households, young and old, ay na pag-alamang passive bilinguals. Ibig sabihin, nakakaintindi ng magbukon, subalit hindi nakapagsasalita. 50%. Sa bangkal abukay mismo, may isang daan at anim na put pitong residence sample na uh, ginawaan ng profile. Ang isang daan at apat na put walo ay nakaiintindi. Isang daan at anim na put pito ay nakapagsasalita ng Tagalog kung kaya sila'y bilingual. Isang daan na tatlo ay balanced bilingual ayon sa instrumento na ginamit sa language profiling. Walong elderly ay dominante pa sa item magbukuan. Dalawamput-anim ang dominant sa Tagalog sa kanilang bilingual na estado. Ang item magbukuan ay gamit sa bahay. Nang mga matatandang item magbukon, gamit din ito bilang mother tongue subject sa K-3, sa bangkal. Anong estado ng Tagalog? By the way, in the province of Bataan, it's the Tagalog ethnic language that's spoken in the province. Tagalog is the basis of the national language Filipino. Anyway, we, we distinguish. So, Tagalog ay dominante sa pang-araw-araw na pananalita ng mga item magbukon. Subalit, sa paaralan, gamit din ito sa literacy skills development. Pagbasa at pag pagsulat. Karapat dapat ba o kailangan ba ng revitalization effort para sa item magbukon? Kung ito ang kanilang profile na halos nasa ilang matatanda na lamang yung L1 magbukon, wala ng kabataan, kailangan ba? At pwede ba? So, hindi pa naman patay. Meron pa naman nag, mga nagsasalita. Ano ang pinakamalakas na salik or factor to say that the item magbukon immediately and urgently needs revitalization. Even as the young or the youth and perhaps even the elderly do not create any more you know, L1 speakers in the households. It's this, the attitude the desire, the motivation. Ang perception at attitude ng mga item magbukon elders ay napaka taas at napaka positibo. They're very positive to associate with the language for ethnic identity. So they call themselves we're item magbukon. They have a very strong desire to learn the language given the opportunity. They're very comfortable to discuss traditions and daily routines with those knowledgeable in the language. And they believe that the language is losing its users because of the absence of reading materials in the language 
and the lack of opportunity to use it in major domains of their society. Meaning, so alam nila na ang wika nila ay nangihina na. Subalit, positibo din sila na ito ay mapalakas, mapasigla. At sa interview nung dokumentasyon, sila ang nagsabi, wala kasing mabasa sa item magmukon, wala kasing nakasulat sa item magmukon, at wala ring mga lugar kung saan namin pwedeng gamitin maliban sa uh, kapo namin magbukon sa bahay at mga ma malalapit na kaibigan. Yun ang kanilang sinasabi. At dahil na rin sa datos na meron ang Komisyon sa Wikang Pilipino, at dahil nagkaroon din ng oportunidad para sa pondo, nabuksan ang programang Bahay Wika. Revitalization effort, Bahay Wika, para sa item magbukon. Ito ang unang modelo sa Pilipinas nang tinatawag natin sa pandaigdigang um, mga programa ng revitalization, language immersion program. Sa mismong ancestral domain ng item magbukon, sa Bangkal, Abukay, Bataan, engaging elders to transmit their language to preschool children 2 to 4 years old for a period of 2 years. Take note do sa siyam ng mga lugar ng kung saan nandun yung mga item magbukon. Bangkal lang, bangkal, barangay, bangkal lang ang merong nagsasalita ng mga matatanda. Do sa ibang, sa ibang lugar, wala na. So ang konsepto ng Bahay Wika ay Dalawang taon, pilot program ito, at inaasahan na ang mga preschool 2 to 4 years old ay matuto, makalipas, o maka, magandang makakuha ng proficiency sa dalawang taong susunod. The program is the result of a Filipino cultural value I call Maka-Filipinong Bayanihan that engaged the collaboration largely of the Commission sa Wikang Pilipino with the Bataan Provincial Pro Government, the Abukay Municipal Government, the Provincial National Commission on Indigenous Peoples, the Bataan Schools Division teachers working with the consultants and the Aita Magbukon community. At this point, we recognize one of our uh, consultants, learning material consultants uh, from the University of the Philippines, Dr. Leonora uh, Diaz over here. Uh, isa siya sa ating kalahok. Thank you, Ma'am Diaz. Uh, faculty siya ng University of the Philippines. She's one of uh, 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 two or three consultants that did the curriculum guide for the Baha'i Wika. Compared to, you know, I was comparing the experiences given by uh, the uh, uh, Thai, um, Marlins, Ecuador experience as well, and especially Larry's uh, of the Hawaiian uh, program. Um, you have like reached almost or more than three decades uh, program running, ongoing. We've started the Baha'i Wika program. Just this, the class started on September 10. The building was inaugurated on September 27. Just the other day, the Baha'i Wika uh, revitalization program is just one month old. Ganon kabata. Ganon 
tayo. Ayaw kong sabihin, uh, <laughs> what? We're just, we're 30, we're three decades far behind, you know, revitalization efforts. And to think we're so diverse a language, uh, a, a country. But better, better late than never, right? <laughs> so there was the launching. So there was the launching, and you can see the uh, opening rituals of the Aitamag Bukon elders on 27th. And you can see here the ribbon cutting ceremony. This is the Bahay Wika building for the Aita Magbukon in Bangkal, Abukay, Bataan. So you see here our chairperson with the municipal mayor of Abukay. Um, the governor uh, came late and so he missed the ribbon cutting. <laughs> but look, this is all the effort. This building is all the effort of the pro provincial government. Costing over one million or, or, or close to two million for the Baha'i Wika. I'll go to that point later on. Inside. So, nagumpisa September 10. So, makita nyo ang Baha'i Wika classroom. Makita nyo rin ang elders at mga bata engaged in, you know, interactive activities. So, ang Bahay Wika nag-umpisa September 10. May dalawang klase. Two to three years old. Thirteen kids sa, uh, na two to three. Three and a half and four na, la, na labing isang mga bata. Tatlong guro, dalawang regular, isang alternate. Labing dalawang elders, isang elder handling three kids. Session schedule goes five hours each day for five days a week. Elder profile, L1 Aita Magbukon, 41 to 80 years old. Children profile, pure and mixed parental marriage, no aita magbukon knowledge at all. Some Baha'i Wicca classroom materials and kitchen facilities. Not as great as the Hawaiian, the, <laughs> the Thai, but look, for a start, no? hopefully to develop uh, 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 with better facilities next time. Um, so there's the floor mat, uh, some reading materials, some uh, kitchen facilities over there. Curriculum content. Aiming for linguistic and cognitive skills development for early literacy the listening, speaking, reading, and writing, the physical and motor development for fine and gross motor skills, health and hygiene routine. There's the socio-emotional human relations development, the self and relations with others, creative and aesthetic appreciation development for music and the other arts. The schedule, there's rest time. Nap time for kids, two to three. They're easily tired, they're sleepy, etc. And there's rest time. Uh, some identifying of body parts, you can see down there. The approach, direct use of the target language. Aita magbukon only classroom. Typical daily classroom schedule, greetings, playing, dancing, singing, counting, manipulati manipulative plays, eating, etc. 
that's in the morning and the similar activities repeated in the afternoon with more chanting storytelling and thanksgiving and prayer uh, uh, poetry reciting as well so we see here an active classroom Elder Rebecca over there. That's Elder Rebecca. So the second component, the Master Apprentice Language Learning Program. It's engaging elders to transmit their language to young adults, this time of the Aita Magbukon community, also for a period of two years. The number of elders engaged, three, number of apprentices, six, with ratio one is to two. One elder is to two apprentices. Session schedule is three hours each day for five days a week. Direct use again of Aita Magbukon, no translation. You know, the usual process of the direct approach. So here you see the Master Apprentice program uh, uh, participants just find themselves comfortably everywhere around the area of the Baha'i Wicca. This was before, one, you can see before the, the Baha'i Wicca uh, uh, final construction was done. And then below here, you can see the renovated, it's a renovation only of the old structure over there. So here is a one master apprentice and elders. Again, the objective of the master apprentice, it's targeting the language functions. Greeting, introducing, describing, you know, narrating, explaining, nothing formal. The curriculum contents, the self-introduction, knowing others, family and home, community and environment, cultural traditions, and their way of life. The Bahi Wika and the Master Apprentice goals, at best, to slow down the process of language loss, if not to totally halt the process, attenuate the negative attitude toward the language and ethnic group. Because there's still the discrimination, marginalization around there. And raising people's awareness for appreciation and respect for linguistic and ethnic heritage and foster people's sense of pride, self-esteem, identity, and ethnicity. I quote Fishman, you know, the social linguist uh, Fishman, on revitalization efforts. I find these quotes very significant because related to Philippine experience. First, it is the people of the community and not outsiders who must do the job. Uh, na, nabanggit din ito ni Sui, like kanina. No? Conflicts within the community regarding the writing system, standardization, and intactness of the language hinder revitalization efforts. Writing systems and publications provide indigenous languages with status and to bring sense of pride and self-esteem to the people. On the orthography development, this was fully developed and discussed by 
Suwilay a while ago. And Fishman is saying, partial acquisition of the language is far better than no acquisition at all. And he recognizes that stable bilingualism will hinder language shift and facilitate language maintenance. What are the factors for success and failure? Bakit matagumpay or bakit hindi nagtatagumpay? Again, I will not dwell so much on them. The same in the Thai experience. No? You need government support, parental involvement, community support, and then the writing system. The existence of many writing systems may create an unfortunate situation when members suffer fractional struggles over which one should prevail. And in the case of the Philippines, this is being observed or felt. The item Magbukon has not lost hope and is not losing hope. They continue to pose hopes and prayers for their sustainability of the Baha'i Wika. And sustainability of the Makafilipinong Bayanihan is a must by the local government, the, uh, both provincial and municipal, the provincial NCIP, the DepEd, Department of Education, Schools Division, and then, of course, the community. And to end the presentation of the item of Bukon, you can see there's not much data I can give. What, what with a one-month-old one program. But still, we go with hopes of the community for their Wika Aita Magbukon. So we quote from the documentation is a poetry re recited. Habok hakoy ng malato.